gamers all around the world. Today, we're doing free for all nomad mega random tier list. I know this is becoming uh, more and more popular of a mod, of a map. People love it. People play it all the time. So I figured why not create a tier list. Usually, you know, it's played random. So you get a random sieve. But I get questions pretty often like which sieve is the best, which sieve is good at this point in the game, that point in the game. So we're going to talk about it right now, right here today. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from the worst to the best and I'll kind of explain how you want to play the sieve kind of give you like a mini guide as well you know to go along with it and why those sieves are good or why those sieves are bad so I have asked eight players I think it's eight I've asked eight well I've asked more than eight players but eight players came back and gave me their tier list so I want to thank Avely, Wham, Kor, Salami, Snoop, Adinky, King, Papi, Par, Recon, and Kalp for helping me out submitting their tier lists so what I did is I had eight of them submit their tier list. They play FFA pretty often. They're very high ranked players as well in AOE4. And then I basically got the average uh, score of each Civ. And this is what uh, this is what we are at. So let's get started. And the way I scored it, if someone rated a Civ number one, that's eight points. If someone rated Civ number eight, that's one point, right? Number two Civ is seven points, yada, yada. And then I got the average, you know, you get it lowest amount of points that is 11 points it is delhi i don't think this is to anyone's surprise uh seven players voted delhi last place and then one player voted him i think number six and that gives them a total of 10 points so why is this save the worst in ffa nomad uh ffa nomad is a clown fiesta and I think Kaup is the only player that actually gave it number six spot. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to have to agree with the number eight spot. It's just not a great sieve. The upgrades take very long, right? As you guys know, which is actually not that big of a deal in FFA Nomad. But uh, in FFA Nomad, it's all about like cavalry or holding your landmarks with good siege. And Delhi doesn't have either of those things. They have elephants, which are very slow. Uh, they don't have any landmarks that are super good for FFA, they don't have any bonuses that are super good for FFA, and they have a very slow start. In FFA is usually one either rush or boom, right, with economy, and Delhi can't do either. Like, other civs can do it better. Now, there is a landmark in Castle Age, which is, um, I don't know what's it called, uh, Compound and Defender, which actually reduces your wonder cost and your keep costs and stuff like that, so that's pretty cool. But that's literally the only thing Delhi has going for them. So it is 100% the worst Civ. Yeah, holding sacred sizes, which is like the Delhi thing, is very hard in every phase. Even for just holding it for gold, because people are just going to deactivate it. So yeah, number eight spot, no surprise there. Now next one is a little bit of a surprise for me, and I would have rated it much higher. Chat, guess which one is next? Pause champs. The next sieve, the number seven sieve, with only 26 points. Oh boy, you guys, you guys are wrong. You, you guys are wrong. The next sieve with 26 points is... Abbasid. What? Out of all my FFAs, I think I actually have most wins with Abbasid. But... Everyone rated it extremely, extremely low. It was very often rated as uh, either 6 or 7 most of the time, which I found very surprising. The reason why I personally disagree with this, I don't know where I would put Abbasid. I'll, I'll sort out in the end. Like, Abbasid has amazing trading, right? If it reaches that point in the game. Abbasid booming is insane. You can boom so, so hard. You can all in someone because you don't need siege engineering, uh, but it's not the greatest sieve to all in someone with. But you can boom so hard because your villagers cost 25 food. You can trade, uh, and then late, late, late game, you can go camel archers or, or camel riders, which are both very mobile, very fast. They have culverins. Uh, their infantry has more health. I just think Abbasid is not this bad in my opinion but again these guys voted and these are their votes obviously i just want to say um the number one sieve and the number eight sieve 
were the only ones that were very obvious. All the other sibs are actually very mixed uh, between the votes. So like a, a player would put, let's say like, uh, you know, a number two sib, they put it as number two, right? But then another player put it as number seven. So I think FFA Nomad also depends how much you, how much experience you have with sibs and also your play styles. So I would say that Delhi is by far the worst, the best sieve is by far the best, but the sieves in between are actually very close and very much playable. So, like for example, uh, Abbasid is rated here very low. I personally think Abbasid is great. The downside of Abbasid is that you do have two landmarks, but you can place your landmark, aka House of Wisdom, in the corner of the map right on the start, right? So most of the time, people have to build their second landmark next to their TC, but Abbasid can actually, and this is how I've won games before, I had a crap spawn, uh, and what I did is I just built a landmark, I scouted, and I was like, oh, there's no one in the left corner of the map, so I'm just gonna build House of Wisdom there, and slowly relocate my base, and that's what I did. So yeah, the weakness is having only one uh, extra landmark, so TC and landmark, but I think, that, I, I think Abbasid is a lot better than 7, that's it. The next one we'll be uh, showing is uh, number one landmark, because it's kind of obvious, so I want to get that out of the way. The number one landmark by the most votes, overwhelming, 68 points, is... China. China is, I think, seven players, if I'm not mistaken, or six players gave it number one spot. So you got eight points for that. And then a few people, well, like one person thought it's second and one person thought it's third or something like that. I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, China has it all, right? Uh, it can boom. It's very hard to all in super early because of the cannon emplacements. It has the most landmarks out of any city. You can hide your landmarks. You can boom super hard. You have Grenadiers, you have Siege, like, they have it all. Like, there's no real weakness to China. They can also go Fire Lancers. Uh, it, it literally has it all. There's no weakness um, in this sieve, and that's why it's number one. Next one we'll be talking about. With 36 points, Abbasid at 26. This is a 36-pointer. It is. HRE. Wow. Another, personally, another one I disagree with. And I'll, I'll tell you guys. Uh, HRE. So, HRE um, got voted pretty mediocre. Uh, I mean, towards the bottom. Now, I do think there's a reason for this. If I can, um, if I can, you know, talk about it. Some players rated it number two. Uh, I think like two players rated it number two or three players. But then a lot of players rated it very, very low. So I think that HRE is not uh, not very played in one-on-ones, maybe by these guys, because HRE is, at, at the higher level, is not that of a popular sim, I would say. So I think a lot of players don't play it too much and don't maybe like it, but I personally think that HRE is not the best sim or anything like that, but I think it's a pretty good sim. Uh, it has really good landmarks. Um, first landmark is great. Cathedral is not actually that great in FFAs because there's so many resources But the best Maybe even the best landmark for FFAs is HREs, which is Elsbach Palace That landmark is in my opinion insanely good and I'm very surprised that people rated it this low because of it so obviously it doesn't, ha you know, HRE's bonuses are infantry, but you can just boom it with economy and just go into mass cavalry. But Elsbach Palace, how much does it give? I actually don't know the exact number, but it gives like 30% uh, reduced damage taken on all your buildings that are connected. So 33%. So once in the late game, if you build your wonder and then your Elsbach Palace is under it, you can connect your whole base and all the buildings take 33% reduced damage, which is insane because people are going to eliminate your building so slowly. Their towers got insane health, their keeps got insane health. Uh, you can put relics into keeps to make it even more OP. It, I, I personally think that HRE is a lot better than 6. 
But again, this comes down to player preference. And like I said, spot number two to spot number seven is very, uh, is fluctuating quite a bit in terms of who voted for what. Uh, yeah, fire armor tech for buildings, emergency repairs. I think it's great, but a lot of players didn't think so. Maybe because of weak early game. But there it is. The next sieve with 39 points, so almost there, but not quite, is... Rus. Yeah, Rus is number five, which honestly was probably the biggest shocker for me, because I actually think in certain situations, Rus is worse than Delhi. So I was very surprised to see people rate Rus this high, because I, I like if I survive past Castle or past or if I get to Imperial, I prefer Delhi personally. In my opinion, Rus is the worst sim for FFAs. Simple reason, they can't make stone walls. And this is a huge deal. Because late, late game, you can always just eliminate the Rus by killing their landmarks with cavalry because you don't need, they, they don't have stone walls, right? So a lot of people rated them very, very high. And this maybe comes down to a play style, right? Um, where people maybe play more aggressive with Rus. Yeah, Rus also gets a lot of free gold. But then again, I don't think gold is that big of an issue in an FFA. So, I don't know. I, like I said, I would personally rate Rus probably 7th. Uh, or maybe even 8th, to be honest. But it's rated number 5 here. So, players think it's pretty good. And Rus was one of those sieves where a uh, few people actually rated it number 2. Which, again, I found very surprising. The next sieve that we will be adding has 40 points so one more point and uh, you know it's pretty close right hre rus in this next sim are very close they're four points away from one another r french now some people gave their opinion on why french is high on the on the tier list a lot of people rated it by the way two three uh and then few people rated it like seven which is why french is not higher it would have been higher but there were like three or four people that gave it number seven and few people gave their explanation why french is so good and i was like yeah th that makes sense yeah so french cavalry is obviously really good which is good for ffas but french like Abbasid can trade stone in the late game, which is very important for FFAs because French can always make wonders, doesn't matter how late into the game is, if they have access to trade. Not to mention you can start trading really early, plus you have guild hall. So initially I, I would have probably rated French 6, but after like hearing opinions from those guys that I've asked about the tier list, and some of them said like, oh, French is like really, really good because of trading stuff. I was like, yeah, that is true, actually. I think a lot of people, including you guys in the shop, probably thought that French is terrible. But, and I thought as well, I thought maybe it's like number six sieve, but I, I think it makes sense. Um, it's it's actually one of the best sieves in the late game because of the trading. Uh, yeah, if you get water trade with French, you get wood, stone, and gold, by the way. Number three sieve with 46 points. Guys, guess which one it is. You guys have been guessing Mongols the whole time. For every spot, you guys are typing Mongols. And finally, 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 the time has come to let you know that the number three sieve is English. <laughs> and then, with the 55 points, a Mongol came second. This is the one that actually confused me the most. So yeah, Mongols is rated second uh, in, in this FFA no materialist by these guys. And English got rated third. So let's talk about the last two sieves uh, here. So English obviously is very good because if you do get a wonder, uh, you have uh, like 50% attack speed on your units. Uh, it's very nice. You got longbows, you got hand cannoners that are blasting, you got trebs that are blasting. They got infinite gold with farms, so in the late game they can perma-produce knights the whole time. They don't care about, they don't, they don't give a crap. 
Um, early game, they're hard to kill because of their TC being a machine gun. So yeah, it has a lot of benefits to it, and that's why it's it's this high rated. Now, Mongols on the other side, I was very surprised. This is probably the most... Mongols and then Rus being where they are is probably two most surprising things for me because they don't have walls. And by the way, Mongols is number two with 55 points. Let us let me remind you, China had 68. So Mongols was very much voted extremely high very often in this. Like they were one, two, three, one, two, three, or two, three, I guess. Uh, few players that rated China number two or three, they rated Mongols one. So what are the benefits of Mongols? Uh, well, they don't need stone to make a wonder. Uh, so they only, well, they do need more expensive, uh, they have a more expensive cost for food, wood, and gold, which is 8,000 compared to 6,000, but they don't need stone. So this actually allows you to build wonder really fast with Mongols. And you have infinite stone, so you can upgrade Bombar Towers forever, right? Because as long as you have Stupa, uh, you will always have stone and you can upgrade Bombar Towers. Uh, early trading with Mongols is really OP as well. Uh, if you get a spawn uh, that's decent and you can trade, early Mongol trading is like by far just the most insane thing because you get it so cheap so early and they have increased movement speed. Um, one of the best things about Mongols is you can run away with your landmarks. So if you have a crap spawn, you, you can literally just move away. Uh, you can hide your landmarks in trees, which we've seen people do. So you can chop through trees and just send your landmark in and just hide it to survive. Um, and it also can, you know, it has pasture so you can get, have, have great food income. The downside is there are no walls, uh, but yeah, I'm very surprised that it's number two. Very, very surprised, to be honest. With that being said, th this tier list right now is what people voted. Again, the nine high-level gamers who play and fail all the time. This is what they voted. This is what it averaged to. Now I'm going to do my tier list quickly and we'll uh, lock it down. So, I'm going to put Roost number seven for sure. I'm gonna put. See, these are these are difficult now. I I I personally don't think Mongols are great. I'd probably do something like this, maybe. Actually, I'd probably do something like this. These would be my votes. I I think Abbas is really good. Like no kappa. If I get Abbas, hell yeah, brother. Um, but these are very hard for me to to place from two to to five. I can see them depending on the spawn being equally good. I just maybe maybe it's my style because I love to you know drag the game out to the late game. Maybe that's why I don't prefer Mongols, even though Mongol is my best seven one and one. But I think that um, the good thing about this, uh, well, not if you're a Delhi player, but the good thing is most people that I've talked to uh, about this said like. You know, China's clear number one, Delhi is clear number eight, and then it's very hard to do the sieves in between. So I think for, for the players that contributed and, and helped me with this, like, let's say someone put it like, like this, and they're like, well, it could also be like this, you know? So it's very close, it's very style dependent, and whether you're playing in tournaments or whether you're playing in, um, what's it called? Whether you're playing in tournaments or whether you're playing, like, for fun, in uh, random games or with your friends, the most important thing is knowing what you should be going for depending on which sieve you have and what your strengths are and try to abuse that and also you know try to understand what the weaknesses are with each sieve so you can you know actually win that is it if you're watching this on youtube thank you so much for watching this was the f f a nomad mega random sieve tier list twitch gamers let's keep going